Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today we got our first of two dungeons that are going to be released for the next patch. This one called the Soulfire Bastion, and overall the mechanic seems like you run through it. You're going to go ahead and collect a currency that's unique to that dungeon, and then you can spend it at a gambler for some rewards that should be more powerful than any other gambler or Artemis the gambler can give you. But let's go ahead and go to the details of the post. Again, it will be linked below so that you can follow along or read it for yourself if you would like. And let's go ahead and get started. So, the Soulfire Bastion. Welcome, travelers, to the third day and the first dungeon reveal of the unbroken nine-day sequential hype week. In the news post, we're going to be covering the first of two dungeons coming in patch 8.5, the depths of Etera, its lore, mechanics, and unique dungeon reward. And then the lore behind it. North of Lake Lyoth in the Empire era, a lich in the service of the Immortal Empire has unearthed the remains of the Osprey's battleground containing countless Solorum-made constructs and potent elemental fire. This lich is now repurposing the constructs for use by the Empire and experimenting with elemental fire to create a force known as Soul Embers, which will be the currency that you're collecting in order to use at the end for rewards. Threatening to spread fire and destruction, an unlikely ally has made himself known in the form of the Unscorpius Empire agent who seeks to sabotage the operations here under the orders of a rival within the Empire, his name, Grin. And then you can see you got a new little UI here. You're going to throw your key in, which you'll have to collect from somewhere in the end game, probably in the Monolith of Fate, perhaps maybe even in the campaign. But so far, that hasn't been the case. And then you can throw it in there and do a run. Grin is an experienced agent for the Immortal Empire, a faction of undead humans who control most of the world. While Grin could easily rise as high in the ranks of the Empire's espionage wing as he wanted, he prefers to keep a low profile. Grin makes a habit of making himself an invaluable asset to Imperial officers of higher rank, getting paid with as many souls as possible by doing their dirty work, and being ready to stab them in the back when better opportunities present themselves. A little bit of a bit of the dungeon for you to see. Grin currently finds himself working for an Imperial Lich of the Immortal Empire and aiding in his attempts to sabotage another commander of the Empire. He wants to keep as low of a profile on this mission as possible, so he has taken to hiring living adventures to attack his target for him. You are that adventurer. Your task is to explore the deaths of the Osprey's battleground turned imperial facility known as the Soulfire Bastion. Collect as many of these powerful resources called Soul Embers within and face the ferocity of the Fire Lich inside. And then the unique mechanics for the Soul Fire Shield and Soul Embers. So in Soul Fire Bastion, you'll find yourself within a conflict of the Immortals Empire vile necrotic energies and Solarum searing fire elements. Any normal adventurer would find themselves quickly torn apart by these synergies. However, in Soulfire Bastion, you will be granted a new ability, courtesy of the Imperial Agent Grin, to help you survive. Of course, being Grin, the knowledge he shares may have been obtained somewhat recently and perhaps without the owner's knowledge. And this looks like to be the shield. Using the Fire Lich's own research against him, you will have at your disposal the Soulfire Shield. The result of the Fire Lich's research is great and the Soulfire Shield is impenetrable to the element it is deflecting no matter the magnitude. This power comes at a cost, however, it must be fed additional soul embers in order to change attunements between fire and necrotic. As you face the alternating elements within the dungeon, both from the environment and from enemies within, you will need to decide when the cost must be paid and feed more soul fire embers to the shield to protect yourself. Cool, so you'll be fighting two different elements inside of this dungeon, both fire and necrotic, and by using the currency that you're finding, you have to choose how much of it you want to spend, how much you want to save for rewards at the end, and switch between those two elements in order to survive to the end. Pretty cool. Looks like it could be a lot of fun. While progressing through Soulfire Bastion, you will gain Soul Embers by destroying various constructs of the Fire Lich, with more powerful enemies granting additional Soul Embers. Use your Soul Embers to continue filling your Soulfire Shield, but don't spend them carelessly. These Embers are a highly valuable resource to the right buyer, and that would be, assumably, the gambler at the end for the rewards that you're really going to want, the whole purpose of doing the dungeon. And as you can see here, he's got the shield on it. Looks like he's got Necrotic and then switched over to fire there. A petty and jealous commander in the Immortals Empire forces, he finds the culture and history of the long-dead Osprex fascinating. Cremoris has chanced upon a solemn battleground that has been buried and ignored for centuries. Overwhelmed with excitement at his discovery, he devoted his entire regiment's forces to excavation and restoration for use by the Empire. And this is some artwork of what it's looking like he's going to look like. Pretty sweet. Kind of a grim to him. 
as you would imagine. He feels a sharp jealousy towards a particular rival whose recent campaigns in the frozen north have won him recognition by the immortal empire himself. He feels a sharp jealousy towards a particular rival whose recent campaigns in the frozen north have won him recognition by the immortal imperial himself. He channels this jealousy into his work, embracing the burning hatred he feels into his creation of a new form of soul magic he is calling soul embers. This discovery has afforded Cremorus an opportunity to finally overtake his rival's glory, and he'll not be so quick to let it slip from his fingers. Not going to be an easy fight, it sounds like. And then the Soul Gambler, which will be the reward that you get for collecting these Soul Embers as long as you've saved some by the end. Should you find yourself having defeated the Fire Lich Cremorus and pockets heavy with Soul Embers, you'll have the opportunity to speak with one of the parties interested in helping you lighten the load, the Soul Gambler. He will trade his items for Soul Embers you've acquired by slaying enemies in the dungeon. He's willing to trade and trade fairly. Though still an Imperial at heart, he is not willing to tell you exactly what you're buying. With the Soul Gambler, you have the ability to trade for a specific item type, such as a helmet or shield, with the possibility of it being any subtype. So unlike the normal Gambler that we have, you don't get to pick the subtype. This will be randomly rolled. However, these items are much more powerful than those that any regular Gambler would offer, with chances of being items no other Gambler would dare to offer. Now I only know of one other Gambler at the moment, perhaps the other dungeon will have another one. But it looks like you'll be able to roll, especially with the little bit of a snip that we get down here, the GIF is that you will be able to get uniques from this. What uniques? We don't know exactly which ones, if it'll be any of them. And when it says more powerful, not sure exactly what that means, but I think it just means it comes with more forging potential because the one ring that they do get here, that they hover over, doesn't really have any higher stats than you would normally find, and it wasn't exalted or anything. As he's located within enemy lines, he doesn't have any backroom stores to change stock while you browse, and you only have at your disposal the soul embers from your recent conquest, so choose wisely. So soul embers seem to disappear the moment you leave the dungeon, almost making it sound like it's not going to be something you can just give to other players, it's something you will have to do on your own, and you can only use what you got on that one run at the gambler for that one, that's what it seems like. So you can't just stock up a whole bunch and then buy everything that's in there after like your fifth run or something, that's what it sounds like it's going to be. This brings to a conclusion today's news for the ceaseless nine day continued hype week. Okay guys, what do you think of this dungeon? For me, it seems like just a beefed up, slightly different way of the gambler that we already have. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more to it, but it does seem like a way to gamble uniques after you've actually done a mission instead of just spending gold after gold in town, which is a cool way to reintroduce the gambler. But curious what uniques we can get. A lot of unanswered questions. Hopefully in the dev stream today, they answer a bunch of those. But overall, it seems like as long as you get more forging potential on these items, the fact that it can be any subtype, it might be a little too much RNG to actually get something super useful. It didn't say whether or not you could have exalted items, but if you can get exalted items out of it, maybe then it would be even more rewarding, but we'll just have to wait and see. Go ahead and let me know in the comments below what you think about it. As always, stay safe and have a good day.